Hello, this is Grant, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rising 1, Master Run. So today we have a pretty easy job, we just have to escort Isabella to Carlitos Hyo in the North Plaza. You'll notice she's over on the right here. I cannot say how often it has happened that normally I'm like, oh yeah, we just go to Carlitos Hideout, and I run all the way there and then realize, wait, I need Isabella, where is she? Oh, she's, st <laughs> she's still in the security room. It happens quite a lot, because she's like, obviously they had that corner, I think, for her to stand there, but just when I come out, you can see in the video even, you can't see her, it's, it's really dumb. So, here I had thought that I had the quest to give him the wine, but I guess I left the call too early so it didn't activate. So I'm really confused because like I definitely got the call, and I have the wine, but I don't know what's up. So, I have to go all the way back out, come back in, and then we'll be good. Oop, missed the loading screen. It can be tough, I normally can find those, but sometimes if they happen a lot in succession, then it can be tough. So, you can't get calls unless you are in the warehouse on. So like in order to get a call for this, I have to come all the way back out here, listen to all of it this time, and then go back in. So now we have it, so now we're gonna head back I think. <laughs> the one zombie there kinda trips me up. We have plenty of time. I think I said I'll just I'll come back. Cause I don't really need to. If I recall, I want to say Isabel is invincible. I know she is later on in the game, but she can't defect and she can't die, so she makes a pretty good, pretty good survivor escort. Downside is I don't think you can fully control where she goes since she's supposed to be following, like you're following her to the hideout. So I like I would prefer it. If we could just like go, go down to the maintenance tunnels and I could just drive there, it'd be pretty fast and simple. I love this weapon. This is a scythe. You can either just use it like a baseball bat, kind of like swing it, or if you hold X, you'll do that little execute. <laughs> I'm basically just using it because Isabelle's gonna do her own thing. I kind of want to kill some time. Plus, I get two uh, bonuses for the durability. That's nine times durability. This is going to last a good long while. Really, this is a really solid weapon, especially if you have the books. It's kind of... Like, you can get them from boxes. The only place you can consistently find them is in the park or in chrysalis. So it's kind of like... I don't know, just a weird weapon. There's a lot of weapons that aren't bad. Or maybe they're like decent because they're just reskins and other stuff. Like, there's the pickaxe, I think. And that's only in chrysalis. And it's just kind of like this weird, like, it's really easy to forget that's even in the game. So, to be fair, things like that have a little bit more purpose when you play Infinity Mode, because survivors, or survivor paths, as some people call them, they can drop them or either just wield them. So, they make more of an appearance there. But really, they're also just a lot of things like reskins of other items objects, like the lead pipe in the 2x4, they're functionally the same. I think there's some different stats that differ, like maybe the 2x4 does more damage but less durability than the pipe. Stuff like that I think uh, they mess around with when they're developing, but for the most part, they act the same. See, I don't know what happens, I was pretty sure you could heat this up in the microwave, because this is the frozen vegetables. I think actually what its gimmick is is that you hold frozen vegetables for long enough, they will thaw out and then they'll heal more. You can you can cook pizzas in there and meat. Or unless I was getting this completely wrong, you need a stove. But see, I tried it on the stove, so unless you also need a frying pan, which would surprise me, it, like that'd be a lot of interactions just to have something like barely get any better. If you get the meat, the meat's another item that's time sensitive. Hmm, looks like Isabella can take damage. I definitely know at the very end of the game when you're running through overtime mode, she's invincible. Which, at which point, you can 
do some crazy stuff easily. But, so the meat, if you hold it too long, it'll spoil. But if you cook it, one, it'll no longer spoil, but also a huge, like, increase in its healing. Same with pizza. Pizza's pretty big. And it's a really, it's a pretty amazing healing item. It just takes a little while to go out of the, out of the way and do that. Definitely recommend it. It's one of those things where I like gimmicks like that. Like, I like how you could plan your route around, okay, I have to go cook, get these pizzas, cook them. But really, there's no place for it. It fits really well in overtime mode, because that's one of the things you need to do, is to maximize your food. So, you'll do stuff where, like, okay, this, you like, you kill Psychopath, and you know they'll drop pizzas. So, particularly with this area in the park, where you can fight, you'll fight the Sniper Hall family, they'll appear on the, the picnic shelter, and they'll drop pizzas. And what actually happens, they drop this cardboard box with everything in it. And you don't either... It's either you do not open the cardboard box, or you just don't pick up pizzas, and then their little like rot timer won't start yet. So you'll wait until you go through all your food, and then you quickly grab the pizzas, and you have to go run to like the food court or something so you can cook them and maximize them. It's kind of a cool idea, like trying to micromanage like that. I really like it. I would love to see like a zombie game that's very, very detailed, slow-paced, measured. Maybe not even a zombie game. Something where it's... I kind of have to think how to like describe it. Slow-paced, almost like one or two threats that you aren't usually there, but it's when they do come around, you have to be very careful. Like, I think kind of the one game that kind of hits that itch for me was DayZ. I've only played the mod version. I haven't played the standalone. Yeah. But I, for me, I guess multiplayer was... For, it's fine, but it doesn't quite scratch that same itch that I'm going for due to the way the multiplayer works. Too bad. Actually, I would love to get the standalone if it gets a little bit more developed. Because like I said, like my favorite part with playing Daisy was just like slowly, carefully getting around the zombies, crawling around, being very careful with like food management and stuff. Like I can kind of enjoy... I have Skyrim and I had a bunch of mods on it to make it heavily realistic. Which I really enjoyed. The, I, it was a blast going through it. Like, okay, no fast travel. I'm gonna buy a horse. Gonna buy a house. I have to go out and do these adventures. Sleep. In that one, it, you have to worry about like, are you wet? Are you cold? Do you need to eat? Do you need a drink? Do you need a rest? It was really cool, and it makes the game have so much more. I guess depth, where the systems are all there, but when you don't need a reason to use them. It's almost just trivial, and I think that's Dead Rising's issue, is there's a lot of cool stuff, but I have no reason to use the majority of it. Things like juice. It's a cool idea, but other than nectar to get queen bees at the end of the game, it's never worth the time to go get the juice. Like, it's not a, such a crazy factor that it's just like, eh. It's, it has basically my feeling, I'm just like, eh. Especially because you have to know the combinations to get the right, like, the right juice. And it would help if they also just show... Because certain areas like Nectar, what's convenient is you can always go to the one in Paradise Plaza and there's as much orange juice as you want right next to a blender. So in theory, if you like knew the proper locations where you could easily make a juice like every time you pass through, I don't see it having much use. Alright, so we're here at Carlito's Hideout. I'm going to be talking about this in the next, couple things in the next episode. So, this is Grant... And don't take your juice for granted.